<laughs> I want to stick with Vampiro here because apparently this was a surprising hire because Vampiro and Jeff Jarrett may have had heat after Jarrett supposedly refused to drop the WCW US title back to him in 2000. Do you remember anything hmm. about this? I remember there being a time when, when like there was, you know, rumors about like being unwilling to drop that sort of thing. Uh, I don't specifically remember about Vampiro, but Vampiro to me has always been like the pro guy played that character very well and had, you know, a lot of success with it. I, you know, they needed somebody, uh, like you said, they needed somebody like to me, when the lights were out, I had totally forgotten that it was Vampiro. And so I'm waiting like everybody else watching it, like, who is it? And it went on long to the kick out. Uh, it was not supposed to be a kick out, but when you're in that position, uh, laying there, I'm watching the lights because I can clearly see the lights. And if it's, you know, the one and the two and the hand is coming down for the third and the lights are still on. Well, if, if he hits that three, the fans know the match is over and we have to get to this other place. So that's just like as an insurance thing. And, you know, whoever got it just a split second too late and, uh, which necessitated me kicking out the, uh, when Vampiro, uh, w when it came on, uh, it, it seemed disparate to me. Like it didn't see, like there was something he fit in with, with the, you know, the, the, the uh, Jim uh, Mitchell, but it, it just seemed like almost like a, like a piece that didn't belong here at, at, at that moment. Um, but you know, Vampiro, I I'd be surprised if, if there was any kind of heat like that, it may have been on Jeff's mind of, you know, if, if he had done that, but uh Vampiro, like I, it's the same thing I said earlier about like winning and losing, like nobody's going to really like, you know, end a friendship or refuse to work for somebody because this happened or didn't happen. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I wouldn't know firsthand on that, but it seems to be like, that seems like a, an embellishment at, at least. Vampiro was an absolute stone cold megastar in Mexico mm -hmm. and never, never really. So in the States he had, I mean, his probably most famous one was in WCW yeah. and he feuded with sting for a bit in the latter days there. But for some reason, Vampiro, I mean, is it just something like, He's just underappreciated north of the border kind of thing because he clearly knows how to get over. Oh, yeah, big time. Vamp knows his way around that ring, and he's he's a pro's pro. Um, I, I I think, you know, and, and again, this is like my two cents worth. Lucha is very different in, in Mexico, hence all the masks. And, you know, there's a whole tradition behind all of that. It's that we in the States here don't quite get. <laughs> And so Vampiro, you know, plays off the Day of the Dead and has, you know, there's a, it plays well into the Lucha storylines. And if you remember when they came here, like in, in WCW, they had the uh, uh, the Misfits coming in and they were great uh, to work with, um, professional, easy. But it was almost like because that big part of all that lore that is behind Lucha Libre in, in Mexico, that... Not that it didn't translate because Vamp's work stood on its own. It just, it was expecting that, I guess the promoters would expect, ha, were expecting that that lore would all come with it. And there was, unfortunately, when the luch, luchadors came north, there wasn't a lot of conversation about why the masks and, you know, what's the tradition and, you know, what is the whole saga behind all of that? And, you know, for Vamp, like the, the makeup and everything it plays you can see right off the the day of the dead which is a huge huge thing in mexico and because none of that was ever translated over much like tna never explained why the ring has eight sides uh or six sides whatever it were um you know it's just uh, make it up but give the give them some reason not just hey we're different because we have a different looking ring uh, you know, it, it, some of those things I think sometimes in wrestling are where the wrestling business will often go into a lot of these types of diatribes. Okay. So we're going to, this guy's got a great buzz here or there. Uh, he's over big in Japan or Mexico. 
and they expect them to come here when there's by and large been no history for them here. And more so there's no history to the whole backstory to why the makeup or the fa- you know, the, the masks and things. It's just expected that because they're a big star someplace else that they come in and they, if they don't bring that with us, eh, well, he's maybe not as over as we thought he should be. We, we, uh, weekly episodic wrestling television needs a lot of content and it needs a lot of compelling content when you're putting that stuff out there. And this is one of the places where you see, especially in, when wrestling becomes so prodigious on television, so much of it was being shown every week in the States came this argument of how many pay-per-views is too much. What's not enough. Uh, and, and they were thinking more on that side of the fence, as opposed to, well, that just means we have to fill up more content. And, you know, if, if your A show, your B show and your C show spends say 35 of the 46 minutes on covering what's going on in the A show, uh, then that gives you less time to get your stuff over the B show. The very fact that there was as much wrestling uh, on TV at this time in America screams out all the more reason for filling it up with different content. So why not on one of your shows give this content to who is Vampiro? Why is his face painted? What makes him that character? Fill that stuff in as opposed to, well, here he is. We ain't getting really over like we thought. He's not getting those big mm-hmm. reactions like he did in, in, in Mexico. And, you know, again, I think it's just our, the weaknesses in hindsight of having the, the the luxury of 30 years of hindsight to be able to look back at, or in this case, what, 20, yeah, 30 years, right? No, 20 years, to 2003, mm-hmm. uh, to look back at this and say, okay, well, we can play Monday morning quarterback on it. But it really is, by my estimation, the failing of our business of our industry and not taking that because there's a, there is a very compelling story there. And with so many kids watching wrestling at that time, those kids, I guess would have gone long on that ride. And, and this is the, the period where you're seeing wrestling sort of wrestle with itself and wringing its hands of, okay, well, we got these adult fans that are looking for this, but we also have kid fans that are looking for that and somehow trying to meander between those two. And I think they just completely dropped the ball because Vampiro certainly does how to get a pop and uh you know the industry you said you'd mentioned uh that you know he never quite got over to the degree here that he was in in mexico and i think that's our business's fault nothing he did wrong mm-hmm. it's uh you know they, they just missed the boat big time because again there's a lot of a lot of content there that you could have filled up with that as I uh, <clears throat> ask you to uh, bring your microphone slightly closer to you in the Joe Rogan style, I'll uh, just say this quick story. <laughs> Apparently, Vampiro uh, was in WCW and Sting came up to him and just went, dude, it's not cool you wearing that white, white face paint. That's my thing. And Vampiro said, well, I've been doing it since 1984. So, I mean, how long have you been wearing it? And Sting <laughs> went, all right. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Didn't have a reply for that. 